Okay, this is probably the most stupid thing I've done. I've never played Warhammer before apart from a short test prior to this. And then I got the idea. Let's just declare war on everyone. Yep, we are gonna do the This Is Total War challenge. You know what? I have so little confidence in myself, I will call it a miracle if we even survive 50 turns. This is 50 turns in This Is Total War mode. Say hello to Abalos, the most bloodthirsty and incompetent commander to ever lead an army. He will show us the way through this upcoming mayhem, I hope. Turn 1 was rather simple. We declared war on everyone, captured the Doom Keep, and gave the honors to Nurgle, the most beautiful of all the Chaos Gods. This is purely because I want the plague buff we can give to every army later on. But more on that later. Oh, and another thing I forgot to tell you guys is, Abalas is a shapeshifter. He can transform into a reeking demon, or perhaps just a simple goal of the Nervii if he so chooses. I wanted to be rather aggressive in my approach to this challenge, so I attacked the Bay of Blades as soon as possible at turn 3 that is. We could just auto solve the battle, just like most of the other fights in this campaign. But we would spend this short moment out of movement points to get some of these cool frogs things ish. In terms of skill points, I'll just let you know we are gonna focus on casualty replenishment rates as we certainly will need it. And oh boy I was right. Just look at this. By auto solving this town right here, we lost a ton of our forces and with the Norske army just above us, we needed them back as fast as demonically possible. At some point, I also got this cutie here. With the kind of battles we are gonna have, I... Um... I call them Paris, okay? They're pretty. Don't judge me. With our army replenishing this fast, I wanted to fight this one army moving towards our lands. But he fled like a coward. So I thought to myself, let's just take his home instead. That should lure him out. Probably not the best of ideas, as two other armies were already on their way towards our capital, Doomkeep, with only a smaller army there to defend it. Actually, let's make that four armies on their way. Shit. It was first at turn 9 we actually reached Ice Drake Fjord. Three turns it took. Maybe we should call him Abalus the Slow from now on. I think this was what triggered the other arm to make a suicidal assault on the Doomkeep. Something we could easily deal with. However, our losses were quite severe. So severe in fact, it can with almost 100% certainty say it will be besieged again. The Bay of Blades will most likely also be lost with two enemy armies just outside it. But at least Abalas is green now. A buff greeny boy. With that, we have actually survived the first 10 turns, although it doesn't look good for the rest of our lands. But that is behind us now. It's nothing we can deal with at the moment, so we continue west. At turn 13, we captured Pack Ice Bay. It might not look like much right now, but I promise you this settlement right here is the start of a new future. A future full of chaos and bloodshed. Longship Graveyard and Doomkey both fell in the same turn, but at least we can take Trollfjord, I guess. At turn 15, we formed a new army led by Judge. His main purpose is to, apart from what his name implies, hold Pack Ice Bay and overall just protect our already occupied territories while Abolus himself keeps on occupying shit over there in the west. And like every great conqueror to ever live, we have a habit of renaming stuff after ourselves. It was at this time the all-powerful Nurgle, bless him, bestowed the plague feature upon our armies. Basically it gives our army a bonus such as leadership, which is the same as morale for all the non-fantasy players watching. But if this plague spreads to an enemy army, it causes attrition. 
With the huge amount of enemy armies around us, this weapon will kill more enemies than any unit we can recruit. We keep pushing. By now I should probably declare my reasoning behind finding Ursum, the god chained by Bellacor himself. And it is quite simple. I mentioned my ability to shapeshift into a goal of the Nervii, and there is a simple reason behind that. To gather the most mayhem possible, I will need to reach a different world. One with a different kind of demon. It is supposedly called Earth and the almighty Nervii are forming a massive trade empire. War is sure to follow. If I can get my hands on some of their skulls or blood, <laughs> you will be able to think of the rest. On turn 20 we captured Serpentjeti, a level 2 town which allowed us to build a cornet altar. Once completed, we can get some proper frontline units at last. They are going to be crucial for future battles. Turn 22, however, was way more interesting. Not only did we start mustering a third army, but also captured Foul Fortress to complete control of our new province, Vanaheim Mountains, to enact an edict. But in order for us to keep it at that, Judge needed to deal with the Norske army crossing into our lands in a daring battle. Just like that green thingy we have in our other army, it was a pure victory. We had to the down and return to Pack Ice Bay. New units were a must after that massacre. Abalas had also increased his muscle mass. Such a chonker. No one dares run into him anymore. In theory, everything seems to be alright now. Our backline was secured with the only enemies ahead of us. Easy, right? Nope. Out of nowhere came this Norske army now besieging our settlement, forcing Abalas to abandon his conquest march and for the first time ever liberate instead of butcher. By turn 25 he arrived to save the day like a champ. Just to make sure the enemy didn't get any funny ideas, Abalas gave over his forces of the other army, so only he would fall. Somewhat uncharacteristic of him actually. A demon with a heart. In the following turn, he would chase after them. Judge, however, became quite restless and decided to go on an expansion campaign of his own now. Now that Abalas couldn't, it is gonna take a while, but you gotta start somewhere, right? There was no time for him to do it either, as Scarbrand the Exiled arrived at our shores. The skull is undoubtedly to bring our skulls to the Skull Throne. And he sure didn't waste any time. Foul Fortress was raised without mercy. I'm so proud of him. If it was in any other situation, we could have been allies with him. Instead, we live in a world where the only right thing to do is kill him ourselves. Abalas personally led the judge into the enemy lines, summoning a plague and taking on the already weakened Scarbrand personally. It wasn't safe for neither friends nor foes of these mighty demons of carriers. Anyone unfortunate enough to stand between them was either squashed or kicked into the caves to their death. It was, as expected, Abalas who dealt the final blow to Scarbrand. With him gone, his forces were in a full retreat, with the shapeshifter himself on their tail. After the victory, he would recolonize the Foul Fortress in the name of Khorne. It was only possible because George captured the monolith in the center of this peninsula we are operating on. All of this was completed by turn 30. Still going strong, eh? But even though we were finally in a strong position to retake our lost eastern settlements, it wasn't possible. The rifts into the Chaos Realms are about to open. As it is only Abalas himself that can traverse the soon to arrive rifts, the two inferior armies were forced to cover what little land we possessed by themselves. They split their forces between each other and would thus cover each coast of our little peninsula. I've decided not to cover what happened to them while we are in the Chaos Realm as it wasn't that significant. 
Instead, we are going to keep our minds on Abalas, who has returned to the halls of Abalas himself. From my test run before this campaign, I experienced a rift open back here, which is the reason for me moving in this direction now. And as luck would have it, one appeared on turn 33. Not exactly at the same place as before, but still close enough. Now, Abolas traveled through the rift and into the plague lands. The realm of chaos. A place unbound. The constraints of the mortal dimensions have no effect here. Only the whims of the Dark Gods matter. Yet there are places where no ruinous power claims influence. In the Forge of Souls, Bellacor lurks and Urson dies. Until we have the four Demon Prince souls, it will remain out of reach. The land of the Plague Lord. Be cautious where you step in this putrid domain. Nurgle's realm is a garden of bloated flora and fauna, desperate to spread their infected spores. And at its center lies the mansion of the Plague Lord. The great sagging edifice where Nurgle himself works to concoct his greatest poxes. Guarding the mansion's gates is the gardener, the favored demon prince of Nurgle. Destroy him to claim his soul. In order to traverse the garden of the Plague Lord unhinged, he needed to seek immunity at the Great Tree. However, we had arrived on the opposite end with a lot of ground, if you could even call it that, to cross. For each day we march without it, our armies will take attrition. So we better be fast. It doesn't take long before we encountered our first opponent. All dead, of course. But this left us without most of our movement points. We could still march a small distance, but it was going slowly and our men were depleting fast. Feeling it was almost impossible to reach the Great Tree without losing the entire army, we started to explore possible travel options, and thus we found a Eureka. If we encamp at the end of our movement, the plagues of this garden will have no effect. This is not a challenge of speed, but rather patience, my kryptonite. It worked fine for quite a while until we were forced to leave our safe to break through a plague army. By themselves, they weren't a challenge, but the attrition was. After the battle, it was still possible to encamp again, but with Grease's Goldtooth now joining the race, we couldn't take our time as we have done so far. Most surprising for me though is that by reaching the tree I actually replenished my entire army. This might allow us to reach the mansion of the Plague Lord. However, as cruel as they are, we were still attacked losing two units in the process. It is what it is really. But I got this great axe though, that's good right? The march over there was filled with tension. Both Grisus and Serena Catherine were in a position to take advantage of our weakened state, if wanted to but I deemed it necessary and worth the risk to keep pushing and to our luck, no attack came. We reached the Garden of the Plague Lord. It was time to face the Gardener. At the beginning we had to capture the first out of three trees, an attack led by Abalas himself. With a fast flanking maneuver, we had crushed the first line of defense. quickly realized this was a ruse. We were completely surrounded, 
the only thing we could do was rapidly construct towers and barricades to help our defense. But once we had defeated the first wave, Abalas and his forces were given access to the second plateau. It was at the third level, a fierce struggle between a Plague Lord and a Balas raged. Upon succeeding in the struggle, we were able to summon the great demons from all Chaos Gods to help in this attack. All would arrive in the end to help fight the Gardener. A heroic victory that secured the first of four souls needed for my quest. However, I doubt that will be completed today, as we are only 7 turns from the almighty turn 50. Not much happened in the last few moments. We did defeat Scarbrand once more as he had caused some trouble while we were in the Chaos Realm, and retook Longship Graveyard. We did also complete our first set of armor, making us an even bigger boss than before. On turn 50 we would test that on Gradling Moot, and as that being the final deed in this campaign. Our progress so far has been small, however with many challenges overcome already, I have a great feeling about our chances for victory. Let's see what happens in the future.